Today's San Francisco 49ers report is presented by Manscaped. Hopefully Nick Bose is on the field on Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers so that he's recording sacks for this Niners defense. If you want to clean up your sack, do it with Manscaped. Join the 8 million men who have purchased their men's grooming products at manscaped.com slash 49ers. Promo code 49ers for 20% off and free shipping. As for what we're getting into on today's show, plenty of updates on the Nick Bosa contract front. An update from Jeremy Fowler, Albert Breer, Kyle Shanahan, and much more. So stay tuned for that as we continue to talk about one of the biggest looming storylines in the National Football League heading into week one. First, though, let's tell you about our programming schedule this week. We will be live later on this Labor Day. Hope all of you out there having a great Labor Day weekend. Just got off the flight from Charlotte last night. We're here live today on the 49ers Report, 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific. We'll be live again on Thursday, continuing to talk about this week one matchup, and hopefully at that point, a new Nick Bosa extension, and then our watch party. It's going down on Sunday, our pregame show, and our coverage begins 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. For those of you out on the West Coast, subscribe, turn on your notifications. The channel is white hot right now, and you don't want to miss all of our updates and coverage. As for the latest on Nick Bosa, let's dive right in. So Albert Breer saying the other day that there's about a $4 million difference between Bosa's camp and their negotiations and the San Francisco 49ers in that front office. Bosa is set, no question, to become the highest paid defensive end in the NFL. But that $4 million difference is between him beating out T.J. Watt to be the highest defensive end in the sport and overtaking Aaron Donald as the highest paid non-quarterback in the game. So two differences there. And Donald's contract pays him on an average annual value basis of $31.6 million. He was a little bit older as compared to Bosa being 25 when Donald signed that deal. So it was a shorter-term contract. Three years, $95 million, fully guaranteed with all $95 million going right to Aaron Donald upon putting pen to paper for that contract. So when you look at this deal for Aaron Donald and then this list of the highest-paid edge rushers and defensive ends in the National Football League, this is where this contract situation for Bosa takes a turn, but it's also important to note what Donald is getting paid, both with the guaranteed money and the average annual value, and what some of these edge rushers are getting paid. Because Nick Bosa, and San Francisco is probably cool with this right now, Nick Bosa probably wants to become the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL to reset the market. That would mean that he gets... 32 plus million dollars beating out Aaron Donald. San Francisco is probably cool right now with making him the highest paid edge rusher in the game. But do they want to give him that much money to have him become the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of football? I'd be okay with giving him an Aaron Donald deal. He's younger, coming off a defensive player of the year season. He's only 25. That's a position that you can play for a really long time. And he's just rounding into form. He's just entering his prime, whereas Aaron, Aaron Donald, when he signed that deal, was probably at the back half of his prime. But both of the last two years, 18 and a half sacks last year, 15 and a half the year before that, who's to say he can't continue to get better? And Bosa, he has the leverage on his side. San Francisco understands they need him week one against Pittsburgh. He knows that he can already become the highest paid defensive end and edge rusher in the game, but he wants to reset the market as the highest paid non-quarterback. And for Bosa, he has an opportunity here to kind of reset the market. And for San Francisco and for Niner fans out there who are a little bit cautious about paying Bosa all that money, keep in mind that the NFL salary cap is going to continue to rise so that 31 and a half, $32 million, whatever it might be down the road, isn't going to be as much as it is right now with the salary cap implications. Now, we're only getting started on the show, but a reminder, when Nick Bosa signs that deal, which I expect to be a historic contract, making him the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of football, we're going to be going live, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, we're having a competition all throughout this week all across the board with our Pittsburgh Steelers channel it's called Steelers talk because this is the week one matchup we want to win that matchup 
in Pittsburgh for San Francisco. We also want to win that matchup inside the walls here at Chat Sports. Starting right now, which channel can pick up the most subscribers through game day? 49ers report, Steelers talk, faithful. I know you can show up and show out. Now, here's that update from Jeremy Fowler that I previewed at the top of the show. Nick Bosa and the 49ers, a bit more optimism here. People I talk to believe he will be the highest defensive player, highest paid defensive player in the NFL above Aaron Donald's $31 plus million dollars if they can get this at the finish line. The 49ers would like this to push through before week one, but that deal happening before week one is not a slam dunk. Those are the big words there. Not a slam dunk, according to Fowler, to get done prior to Sunday's matchup. A deal of this magnitude, he said, has a lot of nuance to it that they have to shake out with all of the structures and the guarantees and all that stuff. And that's exactly what I said last week about this deal. I was asked by a lot of you out there who are loyal viewers of the program, why hasn't this deal gotten done yet? To me, it doesn't make a ton of sense because San Francisco has said, that they budgeted for Nick Bosa, and after he won Defensive Player of the Year, they had to have known that he was going to ask for a contract that paid him more money than Aaron Donald. But when it comes to the guaranteed money, when it comes to when that contract kicks in, if it's backloaded or front-loaded, those are the nuances that we were talking about last week, the nuances that Jeremy Fowler was talking about in that report. What's also not helping this deal get done right now so that Bosa can be guaranteed to be on the field week one in Pittsburgh. No new, no new deals for Brian Burns, the edge rusher for the Carolina Panthers, and no new deal for Chris Jones. Chris Jones, I think right now, at this very moment, is a better player than Aaron Donald. So he's probably going up to the Chiefs front office saying, I'm better than him. I should get paid more. But if Bosa wants to become the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL, and he gets that honor for a short amount of time, and then Chris Jones overtakes him, does that cause Nick Bosa and his camp to be a little bit frustrated because they wanted that title to become the highest paid defensive player in the history of the game? The 49ers and Nick Bosa need to understand this, though, that the Super Bowl window is open right now. This 49ers defense and this 49ers team, they need Bosa on the field week one, and they need him to be playing for them to reach their maximum level of capacity of being the best football team that they can become. And if Nick Bosa is not on the field on Sunday, that can cost you a win. And at the end of the season, when you're jockeying with maybe the Philadelphia Eagles for that number one seed, or you're jockeying with the Seattle Seahawks to win that division, and you point back to a winnable week one game against Pittsburgh in which you did not have Nick Bosa, and you could provide pressure on Kenny Pickett, and Bosa could have done that for you, that becomes a problem. And also the issue with San Francisco, if Bosa is not on the field, they're a little bit light at defensive end behind them with Drake Jackson and Cleveland Furl. But this offensive line for Pittsburgh is one that Nick Bosa can cause a lot of havoc against. Chukwuma Okafor and Dan Moore Jr., they are not great and stout tackles in this league. So if Nick Bosa's on the field, you're able to have that matchup on your side. So that's really the severity, and that's really the importance of this entire conversation here. So with that... We show you this. Who you got on Sunday's game? SF for the Niners or PIT for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Get those game predictions in. And once again, we will be doing a watch party for this game on Sunday. Cannot wait for it. That's why you subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Therefore, when we go live for game day, we go live later on this fine Monday on Labor Day. You'll be able, you'll be able to hop on board and join us and you'll be notified. More on Bosa coming up here in just a second, but first, today's show is presented by Manscaped. September is here. Just want to take a second to talk about self-care, really big into that. And when it comes to making an impression, proper grooming is essential to looking and feeling your best when you walk into a room. That's why the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped, they are committed to helping men around the world walk and talk with some swagger, like Nick Bosa after getting a sack this season with the best men's grooming tools on the market. Join the 8 to 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and enjoy this offer, 20% off and free shipping, by using the code 49ers at checkout for that deal to apply. For the sleekest version of yourself, Manscaped has you covered from head to toe, starting with their brand new Beard Hedger Trimmer. With one guard, 20 adjustable lengths, this device is the perfect travel companion fit to take care of your mane wherever you are. And of course, the Performance Package 4.0, also, Elite has everything that you need. 
Skin safe technology on the lawnmower 4.0 allowing you to really shave your beard, your chest, your back, your balls, whatever, but of course change those blades and keep it sanitary. I can tell you from experience this has taken my confidence in the bedroom to a whole new level. So one more time, it is 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash 49ers, promo code 49ers, so that you can save but also look good in the process. So to really round out the show, going to tell you a reason why 49er fans out there shouldn't really be panicking. If Nick Bosa is going to get this contract done this week or not, we're really not sure. And that's really the big looming storyline for the Niners going into week one. A reason for San Francisco 49er fans to remain calm about this Nick Bosa situation. We've seen a similar situation like this play out, and it happened very recently with the week one foe for San Francisco in the Pittsburgh Steelers. Back in 2021, the Steelers and TJ Watt did not agree to a long-term extension until two days before the opener. That did not keep TJ Watt off the field. In fact, 48 hours after signing that deal, which made him at the time the highest paid defensive end in the National Football League, TJ Watt played 69 out of 85 possible snaps in route to a Steelers win in which he was a contributor. Two sacks and a forced fumble in that 23-16 dub over the Buffalo Bills. That year, T.J. Watt showed no ill effects after not partaking in any training camp practices, just like Nick Bosa isn't partaking in any training camp practices and didn't play in the preseason. Watt went on to record 22 and a half sacks and one Defensive Player of the Year honors in 2021. So judging by the most recent example there with Watt, there is still time for Nick Bosa, and the San Francisco 49ers to get this deal done prior to week one and to have Bosa on the field wreaking havoc against that Steelers offense. Kyle Shanahan on Bosa playing week one. I've never had to make that decision before, and I won't make that until I see him. I mean, I'm going to do everything I can to hope that he plays against Pittsburgh. It's just when he gets here and making sure he's in football shape and we don't do anything that jeopardizes not having him later on. And while everybody, including yours truly, wants to see Bosa on the field in Pittsburgh week one, you have to have the long view in mind. You can't rush Bosa being back. If he, have to, if he has to be on a pitch count, that's understandable. If he can't play because he signs that deal 48 hours before the game, just because T.J. Watt did, then you keep him out of the lineup, you get him ready for week two so that he can be back with this defense acclimated and in football shape because... It's tough to get into football shape without actually playing football. I understand that Nick Bosa is always in fantastic, just awesome, awesome shape because he's a freak athlete. He takes care of his body. But the twitchiness, the speed of the game is very hard to replicate just doing on the practice field. And the long view in mind for San Francisco, they're not a Super Bowl team if Nick Bosa is not on the field. And if he gets hurt, that impacts you this year. It could impact you in the future as well. So we round out with this. Will Bosa play week one, on or off? I'm going to go on the record and say somehow he plays week one. I'm feeling confident about it, and I'm hopeful that it does get done. Appreciate all of you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll catch you in a bit for our live show.